Well, thank you, Sharon. Well, uh, I'm glad to be with you all. I'm looking over the attendee list, and I see some folks out there who should be doing this session instead of me, Darren, Melissa, Nancy, so, uh, you know, Tracy. But anyway, we're glad you're here. I'll share with you some of my thoughts on this, uh, help you look at some things in Aceware and AceWeb that um, I think might help you out. And again, I, I want to, well, we'll, we'll We've got a lot of items to cover. Um, again, I always talk about this, uh, unless you have a brand new person in the group, a lot of times what we're looking at is new pegs to hang old clothes on. And the idea is uh, a different wrinkle of something that we might have used or in different cases, but figure out how you can do that with your Aceware product manager and Aceweb to uh, get the end job done, which is serve students and bring revenue in with registration uh, revenue. So, um, all right, well, here are some things we're gonna cover, kind of going through the list. Um, Ace Web Review, Makeover, Sandbox. So one thing I wanna kind of highlight down at the bottom here, that uh, there's a brand new uh, optional module called the Partner Enrollment Package. If you have to leave, we're gonna cover it at the end, if you have to leave, make sure you go back and watch the end of this uh, webinar because I think that's going to be a, a great tool for marketers in terms of figuring out ways to reach out and, and make yourself heard. Um, I kind of have a general overview on marketing and the idea, well, how can you be a great marketer? And as I mentioned, we've got several setting in right now, but I think they would tell you that it takes work. Uh, the old Einstein comment about uh, genius is so much inspiration and the rest of it is just muscle down hard work. And uh, that's what uh, we're going to try to help you go through to look at some tools you can be using. Uh, and again, apologies to the long time marketers in here, but the review of uh, the classic four P's of marketing. What are the things that uh, you would look at in terms of how you're going to present your product uh, to your audience, but I think one of the things this really doesn't bring in as much as it should is that fifth P, uh, which is people, which are your customers. And, and again, uh, any of you marketers know that your best customer is your existing customer, the people whom you've already served, uh, who hopefully like your product and are coming back for more. You talk about the Pareto rule. Uh, and uh, basically what that says is that 20% of your customers will give you 80% of your revenue. And that's the whole idea again. How do you get to know who your students are uh, and how can you better serve them? So I want to kind of start out with this idea. How do you know who your customers are? Uh, where they are, uh, what programs do they want? Um, you know, timing of availability. How can you best serve them? Lots of questions there about your people, your customers. Well, uh, one of the things that my uh, one of my mentors in college used to say is this quote about John Jones. Uh, and again, it's seeing John Jones through John Jones' eyes and the idea of if you want to market to your students, you've got to kind of stand in their shoes. Uh, and be able to see the world, what you're offering as to what it's going to do for me. The old radio station, WIIFM, you know, what's in it for me? And uh, so lots of questions. Where do you get the answers? Well, uh, Aceware Statistical Reports can do that for you. And again, we're going to cover that in a, in a bit, kind of keep on going with the general overall topics of what we want to be covering today. Coding in Student Manager. Well, what is data? Data stems from the coding, the kind of data elements that you capture in Student Manager. Uh, the Student Manager name record has lots of spaces for data. Uh, I think we figured at one point over 130 individual data fields plus an unlimited number of interest codes that you can assign to a student. And so uh, collecting data about your customers, which is basically your student database. What kind of information do you want to know? Well, where do they come from? Source, uh, how did they hear about you? What, is the, um, what was the 
promotion? What was the reason that a particular student landed in your database? Tracking registrations. Uh, how did they learn about a particular course that they are enrolling in? And then some geographics, uh, geographics, geo demographics, uh, city, state, zip, and of course that's that's data that generally in capturing an address you're able to pick that up. <clears throat> uh, then moving on to programs, uh, what kind of programs do they need? Uh, what can you, how can you make uh, an an analysis? How do you analyze the performance of your course offerings? That's that one P program you know what is what is the product what is the product that you have are those products ones that fit the people in your audience in the in the in the uh, community uh, profession you're aiming to serve um, what kind of information can you learn about those people that will help you deliver a product uh, that meets their needs uh, so again and in uh, in manager, I'm going to flip over to I'm going to flip over to student manager, and again, real quickly cover source and uh, tracking code. So, on the name record, the idea of a source code is what was the first promotion, reason, reference that this student's name got into your database, and that's kind of the etiology. What is the source of that student? Uh, marketing wise that brought them into the database then the tracking what we kind of use as a term tracking has to do with the registration so again the first registration a person ever enrolls in uh, would presumably the source code and the tracking code is the same thing but on the road as they mature as a past participant and start taking new courses uh, this might change from the newsletter to uh, the um, the website or an email blast that you would be sending out to them, reminding them of an upcoming catalog. And the point is, by capturing those tracking codes, uh, you're able to do analysis of how well the marketing that you're doing now is performing. So that's certainly a, a key element in this process here. Um, and we'll get into this programs area when we get uh, into some of the statistical reporting. All right, collecting the data. Well, this is a conundrum here again. You cannot report on data that you're not collecting. And of course, garbage in, garbage out. You can't get accurate reports without accurate data. Um, and again, the idea of coding the system using different interest codes that might be slightly different and you're not uh, recognizing that people might be uh, putting uh, coding different data elements the, the same so again getting back to well before we get into coding um, getting data on the name record in the back office of student manager is uh, you know, pretty straightforward the challenge is capturing the data on the web and this idea can you herd cats again students on the web so the dilemma for you is, is how much data do you want to capture in the add new account or edit my demographic data and edit my account page? And the issue here in my thinking is finding the balance. And again, folks like um, uh, <clears throat> Melissa and, uh, and uh, our, our friend, Mr. DeVault, um, in terms of done for years is what, how do you ask students for data and, and you want to get data to help you make those marketing decisions and identify the profiles of students, but not scare them away or not make it so onerous that they say, hey, buddy, flip off. I'm going to go somewhere else and take a class where I'm not having to give DNA samples just to get a darn account started. And so that, that balancing act uh, is, is a dilemma there. Um, obviously, in some areas, technical programs, you are required by state or maybe by your institution to capture uh, birth date or even social security number. Um, and again, if that's required, that's fine. Uh, the concern is the more personal you get into some of that data that you might be turning off some students. Um, 
Having said that, one of the things that I certainly want to remind everybody here, and most of you are with colleges and universities, is that as a part or as as you're part of a respected institution, uh, you're kind of given a little bit more leeway about asking personal information than would a private business or John and Moe's uh, dance class studio who might be uh, asking a bunch of personal stuff and you're saying, well, why does Dan and Moe need to know my uh, uh, birth date or my birthday as a parent or my uh, uh, certainly social security number, obviously, that w you wouldn't be doing that. But anyway, that, that dilemma of how do you decide how much information you catch on the web. All right, uh, reviewing codes. Now we're kind of getting into this idea about looking at coding in a student manager in ACEweb. Um, we really do recommend that you review those codes because if your program focus changes, uh, if your topics, uh, courses you're offering change, you may have codes in your database that are unused, irrelevant, or that you're missing some areas. So again, um, in, in your code area and getting into manager, you go into add edit codes, look up a code, and let's just go to interest codes here, name interest codes. And so basically you're saying, you know, what are the codes that you're currently using? Um, are they active or not? And are these areas that we still offer? For instance, do we offer social work? Is, is, that, is that a program area that we're doing any courses in? If not, uncheck the active box. And of course, certainly the same, hide it from ACEweb because if it's not a program you're offering, why would you be asking students to indicate an interest in that? That's uh, certainly not, uh, not, not recommended in any kind of practice. Um, in addition to going through those codes, you can use, there is a neat tool under tools, data cleanup, code areas, where you can view all of the interest codes that you've got in the system and be able to make the decision about uh, which ones you might want to consolidate. You can combine codes, and you can also mark them as the active inactive status. Now, I am going to go back to that quickly because one of the things I think a lot of people don't realize, and we'll use subject codes because it's the same, is that when you're in the code area, editing codes, uh, generally, depending on where the code relates to, there is a show value or a show button that lets you see how many names or registrations or courses that this code is actually assigned to. So I want to say, well, gosh, is that ACEWork code still one we're doing courses on? Well, if you hit the show course button, it will give you a view. Okay, 64 sessions of 14 unique course names that have the subject code ACEWARE. So 21, yeah, it, it is one that we're still offering. Well, how about uh, names of students who have taken those courses? Uh, date added? Well, yeah, lots of names, lots of names taking those courses. So again, it gives you a, a quick way to reference. If we were to look for a course phlebotomy, and say, well, how many names do we have interested in phlebotomy? Date added, one. Okay, so if I said, if I'm looking at a program area that I wanna run more classes in, do I were to generate more phlebotomy courses or should I generate more ACEWARE courses? And again, numbers aside, of course, you'd wanna do ACEWARE courses, but anyway. But yeah, that's the idea of using that data to help you make decisions about your programs. Um, Reviewing the codes in ACEWeb. Uh, one of the things that, uh, in my opinion, that we really don't do enough, and we'll get to this again uh, in another uh, uh, discussion about ACEWeb practices, but is reviewing the codes that you have on your ACEWeb uh, student account page, you know, where the student signs up and name address, you generally have a section there that says, here are the areas I'm interested in, and the student is invited to add or uncheck those uh, they're interested not in. 
make sure that all of these codes are ones that are active for you and your programs. And number two, that you want to hide those that are internal. And actually, I'm looking at this and I see at least two that are really internal, i.e., uh, the president's private counsel. Uh, you know, we're not going to let any schmuck uh, here. Uh, uh, you know, Darren, I know you're important, but sorry, you don't get to go to the president's private counsel on yourself. That's my list that I'm maintaining internally. And no, it should not be on my website uh, for a student to check. So again, I I've seen some of these code areas on customer sites that have 50 or 60 interest codes. And in my thinking, that's a bit overkill. You really need to kind of winnow that down for your web students or your web prospects uh, to some, to my opinion, more manageable number, which might be in the, what, 15 to 20, 25, probably max uh, on that. So, um, and again, if you've got disagreements with what I'm saying, uh, you want to you want to you want to come to the table on that shoot a note in the text and we certainly I'm looking forward to comments feedbacks on that um, student manager mailing list and again my my uh, my contention from years and years and years has always been that for the bulk of your mailing lists uh, marketing contact lists for non credit programs the programs you're doing registrations for they need to be in student manager. Now, maybe you want to, you know, cross-reference them in your email newsletter management software, email chimp or constant contact, but they really need to be in student manager. And again, uh, that allows you to note things like when that name was added, uh, how many courses they've taken, uh, you can track their interest codes and you can track the date of when the interest code was assigned. Uh, so again, it just gives you that central location and allows you to do that demographic analysis, which we'll do some uh, we'll do some examples of in a bit. Um, and of course, as you get those mailing lists built and you uh, start adding your codes to it, you can certainly, obviously, use the mass email tool uh, to send targeted emails to groups of names in your database. Uh, mailing people with an interest code or mailing people with a certain organization code that might tie into um, the types of program of company types that might be interested in a, a given class. Um, and again, as you know, any any code in student manager can be a targeted email. Now, um, again, uh, many of you have the licenses for Constant Contact, Email Chimp, or commercial programs like that. They offer some wonderful tools, especially for prettying up emails. But sometimes you just need a meat and potatoes email to go out. Uh, you're short 10 people in a class that's, uh, or five people in the class that's five days ahead. You don't want to take the time to kind of menage through Constant Comment. Uh, constant comment. That's my wife's T. Constant contact. Uh, but jump into Student Manager, and in two minutes you can generate a mass email that goes out to them. Hey, space in this class. Put the link in the class in there. Bam! It's out there and it's on the street. Uh, Sharon, how are we doing? Questions so far? We good? You're doing good. They're picking up new tips and having fun doing it. All right, um, and again, as uh, with most everything we're talking about here, uh, there's more information on this in the webinar archive and then certainly uh, lots of resources in the online help guide. So again, those are your resources that are always available to you. Speaking of constant contact, and again, no offense to Email Chimp or any of your email newsletter programs, um, many of those give you the ability to track emails of students who click on a link or maybe an unsubscribe unsubscribe that comes in through your uh, through your email through your email newsletter package if you export the um, emails from that particular package to an Excel file um, you can use this email status update tool it's under Tools, Import, Export, and it'll say Email Status Update. Um, you can use this to 
uh, flag the do not mail uh, uh, aspect of a student. So if a student says, hey, I am flipping tired of these promo emails, do not send me promo emails. Well, in Student Manager, uh, you have the ability on a name record to be able to mark over here, exclude Lisa's email uh, when you're doing mass email uh, options. Now, note, that does not necessarily, that does not, it does not prohibit you from emailing that student for business related activities, sending confirmation, sending receipts, sending notices to pay an outstanding bill. Uh, that only would have come into play when you're doing mass emails out of student manager. So again, it's a way for you to uh, correlate to make sure you're you're trying to be as, um, how do you say, as diligent as possible in serving your students. If someone says, hey, I appreciate taking classes, but dang it, I don't want those constant every week newsletter or the email blast from you guys on uh, the next upcoming class. Uh, it also could be used if you're promoting a program in your newsletter and it says, hey, a uh, new program coming up on a certificate in blah, 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 uh, you could ha say click here to learn more or even if they click on that article, you know, they click on an article and it says show me more, uh, generally your email program can cap capture that email. You could then import that email element and ha have an interest code tagged to the names that have indicated that so that you then capture that particular unique interest even though it came in through Constant Contact or email chimp and correlate that into your student manager database. We kind of call that cross-pollinating your manager database with uh, data from the email newsletter. Anybody hey, doing yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and ask your question. Maybe they can well, answer. Well, I was going to ask while uh, Melissa's on there. Uh, do um, does anybody do that now? Go in and do any correlation using that uh, uh, email status update. Raise your hand if you do. Uh, yeah. Not seeing hands, but the Not question about that. the about the exclusion of receiving emails. Does if you check that, does that ex exclude a person from the list when you export it? No, I, I don't, well, it depends on the, it depends on the query that you're using. I think on email exports, uh, there is not a bona fide check if you're exporting it, say you're exporting it to Constant Contact, you would need to put in your filter uh, that, um, uh, let's try real quick doing an email. But generally, most of the exports, most of the exports you're going to do are going to come out of mailing labels. Uh, okay, export to file, print mark labels. Oh, there it is right there. Exclude don't mail names. So if you're doing exporting to XLS uh, for 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 a mailing list in your mailing label setup, you can just check this exclude don't mail names, and it will automatically respect what however you've got that coded. I hope that answers answers the question. So all right. Um I didn't see any names on that uh, tool and so let me kind of review again. Data cleanup, no import export tools import export and there is the email status import. And again, so you basically would uh, use this tool to open the file that has the email addresses of either uh, blacklist or don't mail people or people you want to add an interest code to, and it will automatically do it. So again, great tool to uh, get more power out of your um, out of your email uh, newsletter software. Uh, drive them to AceWeb. All roads go to AceWeb, and and again, I think that's. Uh, that's something certainly you want to try to do is uh, figure out ways to encourage those students to come in and register and certainly come in and register on AceWeb. Uh, there is a email template in your email templates 
or if you're a, if you've got an old student manager and maybe have an old set of templates uh, contact your tech and they can get you an updated set or steal one from an ace web demo that you can download and basically it allows you to generate a mail merge email that would have courses that are upcoming that match the interest codes that that student might have on their name record. So again, uh, this little show up class function is awesome. Um, and I, we've got examples of, of um, uh, email templates that you can use for that. Uh, another one, if you're not doing, and gosh, I hope you are, is find uh, your marketing partners, whether that's a chamber of commerce, whether it's a business group, a SHRM chapter, um, a, a, you've got an industry contact list somewhere, uh, send a link to courses that you, they might be interested in using this copy link to course status page. Now, when you do that, it'll, that will give you a link that you could paste into an email to send to the chambers, send to the sisters of the poor, um, whoever you're working with for programs and say, hey, here's a link to our new course on ABC. Um, if you would, put it in your newsletter, put it in communications that you're doing. Uh, and that will allow that student to uh, register or they'll, they'll land automatically in that particular course uh, in your ACE web. Uh, email tips, um, and again, I'm going to bring in some that are super generic. If you've got some, jot them down. We'd love to see them. Uh, subject line, recommended typically, trying to keep that brief, of course, uh, trying to keep it simple. Um, there are uh, a number of resources on perfect subject lines, um, and again, browsing those or doing some Googling on those gives you some ideas. Um, sending follow-up emails, thanks for attending. Again, you can use the follow-up email tool inside Aceware uh, that you can thank somebody for attending a course that they finished and maybe put a link into an upcoming course that would uh, be related to that. Make the emails personal, maintained house lists, and again, I don't know how many people use external email lists, but obviously if you can build your own in-house list that we talk about existing customers and all tends to be more success. And, and that certainly uh, you're, you're always looking, you're always prospecting, you're always being a scout. You're always scouting out new names that you can add to your database that would be similar to the kind of people you serve or that would fit the profile of that student, that ideal student of yours. And um, we're going to get to that in a bit. Again, shares, swap with orgs. We mentioned the chamber again. If the chamber is willing to do some swapping out, uh, you know, can you add chamber members to your list so that uh, you can offer that as a service? We'll send them lists of um, programs that they would be interested in. Again, do. Uh, do add any uh, thoughts or ideas. Here's one, and I, I again, the, you know, with some of these tools like certainly Constant Contact, you can make uh, flowery, jumping, I call them dancing chipmunk uh, emails. Uh, but uh, I'd mix them up. Uh, you know, the idea of certainly uh, you can do some HTML emails, but sometimes if you just want to a Sergeant Joe Friday, ma'am, here are the facts, just the facts. Uh, a plain text email uh, can cut through some of that clutter and um, get your word across to the students. Uh, so again, reminder and follow-up emails uh, in your course setup is where that is turned on. Um, you can, again, set that up as a default, uh, but at the course-by-course -course level, you're able to do that as well. And of course, then you're able to edit the content of that particular email tool. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that most of you are, 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 are using this. So integrated statistical reporting. Now we come to the fun part and getting back to that question of who are your students? How do you know who that person is that you are serving? And uh, statistical 
reporting is is one of those that we're going to be looking at and uh, the idea of um, how do you how do you use the data that you're currently collecting to get a profile of the students in your programs <clears throat> uh, we'll talk we'll show you the geospatial marketing uh, option which is an integrated report available in aceware to let you map students by lo by geography uh, marketing campaigns and again tools to pinpoint select groups and that's again probably what most of you are familiar with 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 like interest code marketing or uh, queries that target particular demographic characteristics of a student to send out a notice that's related to them so uh, types of reports and statistics um, again i do hope most of you have gone through a bunch of these type of reports whoa uh, there is a uh, several there's a couple of three webinars in uh, the webinar archive about statistical uh, reporting, uh, but I want to kind of go through a few of these right now, and there are several in the, what we call the deadbeat area. So reports accounting, one line, one reg deadbeat, and for some of the new ones out there, the term deadbeat was originally coined because this was where we ran a report to show people that owed money, but it really is a registration level report. So for what it's worth, if you're wanting to do a report of registrations, uh, this is, in my opinion, what was that? I, I, said, I said one time that if you are running a CE program, I can give you 95% of the report data you need out of Deadbeat uh, because it is a registration record level report uh, and it's really one of the most flexible and multi-purpose that you're going to find. All right, let's take a look in there. Uh, we're going to show additional reports. Um, again, some of these reports uh, have been around for quite a while. Some of them have been updated. So if you've got a course, a report in here, first time enrollee, first time participant, and it doesn't work or it throws an error, uh, contact your tech and we'll get you an updated report. Uh, again, depending on how old your original report data set is. This is one that we're going to take a look at, first course registration. And if you look over here under notes, if you're browsing your database, if you go over to reports, go over to the notes column, there's generally some tip in there about what it is. Stats on who registered in what course as their first course, and then whether they went on to take other classes. And the idea here is, we'll go ahead and run that. Uh, we'll recycle the report area because we're going to come back to this. And we're going to do it for a given term. Uh, we're going to look for 20 uh, winter courses. Uh, no, we're going to run the fast, and we're going to do first course registration. OK, so what that tells us for of the students in ACEWARE Pro Train test course, we had one student wh where this was their first class. That student did not go on to take any other classes. Uh, let's go on. And again, uh, I need to tell you, this is a dummy data set. And so it really, we, we actually concoct these um, registrations automatically. So there's not a lot of natural progression in here. But here you see the idea is mastering student manager one person, this was their first course that they took. And then this was uh, the number of subsequent was one. So they averaged two subsequent courses out of that. And the money spent by the repeaters was $325. Uh, and I don't have much in the way of, again, uh, showing what the average money spent for repeaters. but. Um, in a, a live database, something like this would give you an idea. You're basically looking at, how do you say, what is your, pardon me guys, the gateway drug course that brought people into your program? Is it a beginning mastering student manager? Well, according to this, not so much. We really haven't necessarily seen a lot of people 
in here who took this as their first and then went on to take lots and lots and lots of other courses. And so the idea is it helps you identify core foundation courses that might represent um, courses you wanna to try to sell as many of because once they take that little taste, they want more, they want more, they want more. So there's one. Now we're going to go run another report and let's run uh, to, to do, we're going to run one for a range of dates and run the um, 0101.19 through 12, 12, 31.21. Okay. And now what we're going to run is our prior year growth by quarter. And what that is allows you to look at a set of registrations and you say, and you wanna run a query that covers the range of time you might wanna analyze. This gives you kind of a review of how is your program doing over time? In other words, from last quarter two of last year to quarter two this year, uh, how many enrollments did we have last year? How many this year? What was our change? So this was like all registrations during uh, the two years that we're doing the analysis of. Now, you're gonna need, in order to do this right, and Darren would, would admonish me, well, we have to have a baseline, but then we need to look at program areas. So we've got a baseline for all classes, a moderate increase there. Um, so we're gonna run this again, only we're going to run it for a range of dates and a subject code. So now we're going to say we're going to start after a 101.19. And now we want to pick the subject code ACEWARE. So now we want to see how do the ACEWARE courses perform term by term. Well, 11 by 3, 27% uh, increase, 15%, 76% increase. Hey, ACEWARE numbers are outperforming the rest of your program. So again, this is telling me that I'm getting really good growth in the ACEWARE courses relative to the rest of my program. Ergo, I probably ought to run a few more of those courses. Anyway, okay, so those are a few out of the deadbeat report. Um, by the by, if you would, if you've got a particular question about your database that you say, well, you know, what I'm really interested in is how many left-handed people took courses that meet on a Monday or some such ridiculous thing like that, jot it in the note and we'll see if we can do a quick stump the chump on a, uh, on a stat report. Okay, so that was some of the deadbeat report statistical areas. There is a bona fide reporting area called statistics down here in the statistics area. We're gonna start with the tracking code report. And remember we talked about tracking code being what was the promotion that brought a student into this class and paid the money for the course. So there are two types. One is where we do an analysis course by course, which is a course by course breakdown of what promotions went into a given course or the tracking codes across all courses. I call it the mother of all tracking reports. So we're gonna run that one first. Summary report, default. <clears throat> we're gonna look at total due, we're gonna do course number begins, and we're gonna look at the year 21. And so it tells us for every promotional code that we captured, how many registrations came from that code, percentage of the total, revenue coming from those promotions, how much was the cost of that promotion uh, according to how we coded it in, in our uh, ACEWARE codes, and it'll generate the return on investment. Um, and again, if it's a mailing, uh, if you had a mailing that you actually generated a mailing list for and, and submitted that out, um, it'll track the number of brochures returned uh, for the total numbers of, of brochures sent out. Um, so again, that's uh, your tracking code report. Statistics, names, demographic summary. Now in the names demographic summary and in the course data summary, basically what you're doing 
is we're doing called a cross-tab analysis where we're taking a data element of the name or in the courses from the course, and we're saying, give me a reference on that data element based on uh, the registrations taken by that. So we're gonna do a firm summary report, and we're gonna do it for again, 21, 2021. Our year is almost over. We're gonna look at total due. So what this tells us is based on the company that is assigned to the student, or in this case, students who didn't have a company entered on their name record, how many names registered, how many registrations uh, registered from that group, the total amount due from that, and the average course fee per registration. Uh, so here's a name, Ace Hardware Guy or Gal, and they took 11 courses, so that's pretty good. Aceware Systems had eight, and they people took 20, 35 courses. So again, you got percentages therein, and obviously if you're a marketer and you're looking at business to business, you'd say, well, golly, uh, Aceware Systems sent a number of people, um, Lewiston High School sent three, uh, would those be companies that I need to send my in-house training people out to have a talk with and say, hey, we appreciate your business, how would you like us to bring your programs in-house? So again, that's the kind of data that you can use. Now, to stay with that, back to the business of who are your students, you say, well, uh, talk to me about uh, their sex or their ethnicity, or again, if, if you're capturing data about these people, you know, what is it that, that tells you about them? Uh, if you're doing a uh, birth date or at least birth year, uh, give me the age profile. So we're gonna go age in years. Uh, we're gonna run it for again on our 21 year again. Total due. And now we have what kind of a cohort grouping you have. Well, there's a, a five set, an eight set, a nine set, iPad set, an AMA, American Marketing Association set. So we're gonna run that and it'll tell us uh, that's the age profile AMA breaks down people into. And so it tells you, here is my age profile of where my people are coming from. And look at that, guys. I got a perfect, uh, everybody in that group was coded to an age, had a birthday in. So that's pretty pretty dang impressive, huh? But anyway, okay, so that is your name statistics. Um, final one, or two more to go. Course statistics, course data summary. Same kind of thing in the course area. Uh, by a department name, if you're using department, by the account number, if you wanna say different courses are tied to different accounts, uh, we'll do subject code. Um, but you see here, basically there is any element about the course record, uh, day of the class, the begin date, uh, enrollment cluster, user-defined field. So anything on the course or the course user-defined field can be used as a criteria. Summary report include canceled on our course reporting because that'll give us a cancellation percentage on each group. So let's run that. Subject code 2020 again, 21 I mean. So, so that tells us here are the total classes we offer in each of these areas and I need to fiddle with the format. My percentages showing up. How many of those had to be canceled? Here are the enrollment numbers. Here are the averages for enrollment. Here's the income, expenses, and net income for this cluster of courses. So again, this really begins to let you do an analysis of how are these programs performing by pick a variable, and you can do that kind of report. All right, one final shot on this, and that is in both the names and in the course area, we have a option that's called performance sorting. And what that will do is tell you a rank order based on typically number of credits, number of enrollments, dollars paid or dollars earned, what are my best students, courses, or firms. So if I said, I wanna know which names are generating the most money, and I want the top 10 students, top 10 students for 2021. 
pick the number, put that in, total due, and bada boom. Yeah, I, I didn't even make the list. Boy, I'm kind of bummed. I normally am up in that list here. Uh, but again, there are the top 10 students based on fees paid 2021. Now, what do you do with that? Well, if I were you, I would send them a thank you note. Uh, invite them to be on an advisory board. Um, invite them to a tea with uh, the president or the, the campus dean. Uh, again, uh, the, uh, you know, create a frequent flyer program. Uh, hey, you guys have been uh, active participants. We're going to give you a coupon for X amount off for your next class. Um, again, it basically tells you who is most active. And again, the same thing on the course side, only it would tell you rank order the courses based on income, enrollment, hours, and so you get a rank order of which courses are generating the most revenue, the most net revenue, um, yeah, again, within your course offerings. And we won't even run that. Let's see what other courses, interest codes, who's a current customer, right. Um, one of the ones, again, we talk about interest codes, and you say, well, um, you know, what, what are the, what are the, what are, what are people most interested in? Well, obviously, if you run course level reporting and do it by subject code, you'll say, well, which course subjects have the most uh, participation? But you can do it also from the name side, which basically lets you analyze your database based on the interest assigned to the students. So I'm gonna do an interest code analysis for all students, and I'm going to say all names. I don't want to care. I don't care about registrations. And I'm going to skip the money because all we're doing that is looking at names. It said, of my database of, I don't know, 65 students, how many names have a interest code of ACEWARE? 59 out of 65 have an ACEWARE interest code. That's kind of a duh since we're making the database up. But yeah, this tells you then just looking at a gross count of interest codes, you know, kind of what what is your database right now in ACEWARE look like? Uh, so again, that's a that I think is a program forecasting, if you would, tool. All right, I don't see questions, so we're going to keep on keep on plowing through mapping and zip code radius. I do want to cover this one real quick before we leave the reporting area. And this is a, a report that generally is under mailing labels. Uh, and it's called um, exclude don't mail. We don't care about uh, don't mail on this. And it's called um, zip code radius. So we're going to run a query. We're going to look at uh, 2021 again, I think 40 some students. And we're going to look at a combo of the zip code radius and the mapping so that you don't have to put this together, but I'm kind of illustrating two tools in one report. So what that does then, the zip code radius tool allows you to say, pick a zip code, 66502. If I'm doing a uh, marketing for a one night class, I have to figure, I'm not going to get people from more than an hour's drive away to come to that one night class. So I'm going to stay within a 60 mile radius of my zip code, which is where the class is. Uh, so we're going to do that. And now, so here are the names that match that uh, 60 mile limit. And all of these towns are little Kansas towns that are within 60 miles of Manhattan. That was our zip code. Now it's going to ask us about mapping them. So we're going to map those by name name, by the address on the name, rather than the company that they're with. So here we have a set of names. And let me, re let me center this here. So allow the location. And let's zoom back out. So this is showing us where these people live in the Manhattan area. And so we have Susan, Jason, Sharon, they have their address here at the office, up by the pond, up in the hills. Antonio Thomas is downtown, Michael is downtown, 
Michael Jameson lives by interstate. Paul is over on the interstate, and I'm out here north of town in the in the hills. So again, it gives you a physical layout of where those um, where those students are. Great little tool, and um, we've got info on it in the uh, help guide about uh, your mapping tool. All right, now we can get back to the slide deck. Ace Web, and we got five minutes. We're running way behind here on this, so let's kind of run through the Ace Web element. Using that Ace Web URL to to put it on your promotions, encouraging those students to um, to come into your Ace Web and enroll. Hold message that says, you know, register online at such and such address. Contest link to social media. Doing snail mail to promote online registration. Uh, here's the thing for you. Um, make sure that the links work. And this is something, be a secret shopper. If you have not enrolled, you really ought to go in and fake an enrollment all the way through to where you get to check out or even to where you're gonna pay for the class to make sure that your system is behaving correctly. Um, again, are you linking to social media? Are you using the new general announcement feature of AceWeb? And again, of all of these, I think the most critical thing for you, pay attention to how your own site works. And again, uh, if you can't navigate it yourself, good Lord, what are your students going to do? So uh, make sure your tech is involved to be able to get you up to speed on that. Uh, what's it look like? Do you need a makeover? Do you need an updated makeover? Um, again, uh, we add new features to AceWeb, and this is something you want to pay attention. So right here, need new ideas? Go to the sandbox on our website, the AceWeb sandbox, AceWeb University. And under the examples area, you'll see all the different things you could be doing with your AceWeb. Uh, we've got several new things, a grid format option. Uh, we support the hybrid courses. Again, partner enrollment packaging, proxy multi-registrations, which is a way for firms to register multiple people from their company into courses. Again, and most all of these are on uh, the web demo so you can actually see how it works. Uh, some notes on your web, your course descriptions, and again, um, it's basically, again, investing time in looking at those. Um, I would certainly emphasize this one uh, using the HTML wizard to uh, so that you have again like bullet points and putting in some bolding on here uh, that I just think makes it a whole lot more easier to read. Um, certainly encourage using Google Map links to put in a, a location link to courses, especially if they're scattered around. Um, and again, putting your social media links on your website to kind of promote those. All right, just about done. Marketing campaigns. Um, this basically is basically email capture. Uh, and again, so if you've got, um, you've got new promotions and you've got an announcement on your web page proper uh, about a, a, a new program you're offering, you can use the marketing campaign option to be able to enter, uh, get a student to enter in their uh, information, first name, last name. And again, if that person's in the database, it automatically adds an interest to their interest codes and it sends an email to a staff member that tells them that uh, Chuck Havlicek has signed up for this uh, ACEWARE newsletter now. Uh, and certainly uh, you can see that on the ACEWEB sandbox. The marketing of every marketer, I mean, there is so much crap coming in your inbox, you got the TV, you got, if you're on social media, how do you get your attention? Well, one of the things that I would certainly have you think about is looking at the optional modules, or if you have them, really using those as a excuse to toot your horn. You know, how can you, why would you want to make a big deal about people in um, Knoxville, Tennessee to come take a class at UT. Well, it's because we're gonna give you bundle discounts on programs. It's because we now offer BOGO on select classes. It's because we give you a, a partner pro, uh, discount program. 
if you bring a buddy to a class, well, these are these modules we talked about that would really give you the opportunity to toot your horn, get in front of people, and try to get some attention here. So again, course packaging, again, that's on the web. You can see an example of it. Uh, BOGO options, again, there is a BOGO option on the, on the web, and the partner enrollment package. And this is the brand new one, and basically what you can do is promote bringing a partner to a class, and when you say bring a partner fee and you're offering it at a discount, uh, AceWeb will automatically ask that person to pick the partner that they're going to bring. The fees belong to the person who initiates the registration, but they can sign up their dance partner, class buddy um, at that time and no need for special handling. Uh, and again, to me, that partner enrollment package really, and again, it doesn't have to be partner. You can label it however you want. Pick a partner, bring a buddy, find a friend, choose a colleague, invite an individual, attend with another. Um, again, a way to help you uh, promote. Well, we are at the last slide or two here. I've, I've listed some marketing resources that I find helpful. Uh, slideshare.net is basically a set. If you haven't seen that, it's cool. It's slide decks that are the most popular that people kind of put in kind of a YouTube for for PowerPoints. It's kind of a YouTube for PowerPoints, and it ranks them as the most popular. What my thinking is, if you are a programmer trying to come up with course ideas, I would browse that because it seemed to me if there's a topic, a hot topic in the PowerPoint area, that might be a potential topic for a class that you might offer to your, uh, to your people. So again, let me know what your marketing resources are 